5 and Romans 6, that's what Paul was answering to. They said, well, if you're saying that, that it's just faith in Jesus and not our works, then, then people will just believe in Jesus and then live like the devil and they're going to heaven? Absolutely not. You see, there's two doctrines in the Bible you need to understand. The first one is justification. What is justification? It is a legal declaration. The person who believes in Jesus Christ is legally justified before God. God looks at that person as right with Him, not on the basis of their virtue, but on the basis of what Christ did for them. God declares them righteous. That's the believer standing. But then there's another doctrine called the doctrine of regeneration. If you've read the Bible, you've heard it in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things are new. What does that mean? It means those who truly believe in Jesus Christ have also been born again or what we call regenerated by the Holy Spirit. They've been made alive. So that it's not them believing in Jesus and then doing a bunch of righteous things that they hate. But it's they're believing in Jesus and they're saved. And because of that salvation and because of the power of God to transform a life, they now begin to walk in newness of life. But never is their standing before God based upon what they do. It's based upon the cross of Calvary. Christ, Christ alone. Now I'm going to finish with an illustration. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't apply to you, but it may give you some insight into what I'm talking about. First heard this from a dear friend of mine, Charles Leiter, and it's a wonderful illustration. Let's say that we own a bunch of sheep and we got a problem. There's a bunch of coyotes. And how do we solve the problem? Well, there's a few ways we can solve the problem. One is we can get a gun and we can shoot the coyotes. Now that solves the sheep's problem, solves our problem, but it doesn't solve the coyotes problem. What else can we do? Well, we could get a cage and we could trap the coyote. We could trap him. So we've solved the sheep's problem, we've solved our problem, but we really haven't solved the coyote's problem. You say, well, he's reformed. No, he isn't. He's just caged. He's not reformed. He walks back and forth in that cage, back and forth like this, and just wanting to get out. You let that door open, he's coming out of there. So we haven't solved this problem. You know what I just described? Religion. And a lot of Christian religion. I go to church, I hate it, but I'm going because it's the right thing to do. Do this because it's the right thing to do because i got to do it. There's really no love for God. There's no genuine desire to serve Him. Just got to do these things. That's legalism. That's religion. That's church. Why do we have to go? It's the same way as the coyote saying, why can't I just eat sheep? And every time someone's not looking and every time that door's open, you're going to eat sheep. You're going to sin because that's what you love. Now what is Christianity? God changes the coyote into a sheep. That's Christianity from the inside. He changes their heart. He takes out their heart of stone and He gives them a heart of flesh. And that's how you know you've become a Christian. Not just because you give some empty profession that, yeah, I believe Jesus is the Son of God, but because something, as it happened to Peter, something more than flesh and blood happened to you. God showed you this is His Son. And He put an overwhelming new desire in you to follow Him and to please Him. Do you see that? I'll give you a lecture right now in ontology and it's this I have a nature I have a will and I have activity things I do if my heart loves evil my desire is for evil things of this world the immoralities the sensualities the money the what everything that's in this world if that's what my heart loves then those desires they influence my will, and my will pushes my activities. I'm driven. I'm driven by my will that's driven by my evil desires, and I do evil. But if someone can change this heart of mine so that the things I once loved I now hate, and the things I once hated, like righteousness, I now love, then I don't have to, there's not much to worry about after that because my new desires push my life in a completely different direction. And when I do sin, it breaks my heart because my heart's been made new. If I was the pastor of some of the churches that exist, say I'm the new pastor, as soon as I become my first Sunday, someone walks up to me and says, Brother Paul, there's a guy over there named Bill. He's over there up, up the hill there, and he hadn't been to church in five years and, and everything, and, and we can't get him to come back to church. He's a member here. Would you please go and, and, and get him? That's your job. You're the shepherd. So I go, I knock on the door, and there's Bill. Bill says, come on in. I come in. I said, Bill, 
You haven't been in church in five years. You're right, preacher. You're right. You're right. You know, I just, I just I follow in other things, just have a love for the world. But you're right. I need to do the right thing, and I need to get back in church. And Bill, I hear you've been walking around town drunk quite a bit. You're right, preacher. I, I've been drinking and stuff. Just love that old liquor, but I need to put it away. I need to do the right thing, and I need to get back to church. That's what I need to do. Okay? And Bill, I, here you haven't been very faithful to your wife. But you're kind of a man about town. Preacher, you got me there. You're right. I just, I, I just need to let that go. I need, as much as it pulls on me, love that kind of, kind of life. I just need to let it go, and I need to do the right thing. So next Sunday, I come to church, and everybody, Pastor, you have, this is incredible. A sheep has come home. No, he hadn't. They're all looking at Bill, and they're going, a sheep has come home. No, he has not. A wolf has just come back into the cage. Do you realize what Bill's saying? You're right, preacher. I need to stop doing all the wicked things I love and start doing all the righteous things I hate in order to gain some entrance into the kingdom of heaven. That's religion, and that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a life transformed. And if your life has not been transformed from the inside out and all you have is a religion or a ritual or there's certain things you think you've done and you're doing and because of that you're going to be okay on the final day, you're not. I'm telling you, you're not going to be okay at all. The question is, not some religious exercise as Paul says in the book of Galatians. The question is, are you a new creature with new desires and a new heart? What should I do? Acknowledge your sin. Acknowledge that all your righteousness is like filthy rags before God and throw yourself on Christ. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Nothing in my hands I bring to barter with God, to pay off God, but simply to the cross of Christ I cling. If you have any questions, there are pastors here and others, and it would be what more than happy to speak with you after the service. Let's pray. Father, thank you.